from Denver. This is Fox 31 News at 8. We're on it. Dozens of new charges filed against the suspect in the grocery store tragedy in Boulder. And a push to get more minorities vaccinated in Colorado. New details on the issues that they're having getting shots into arms right now. And it's a great morning here at Red Rocks Amphitheater as the venue gets ready to welcome its first large crowd back to kick off its concert season. And we're going to have details on how many people will be allowed inside and the regulations that will be in place. All right. Good morning. Happy Thursday. So th there's fog issues, but it's very. Uh, <laughs> Seems like it stumped you a little bit. I had to itch my head. I had an itch on my head. What do you want me to do? Not itch it? That's not an option. I'm itchy. Oh, OK. I'm just observing. Dry scalp, Megan. It's a thing. It's a guy uh, thing. So. <laughs> There's fog, <laughs> but it seems to be kind of hanging over downtown Denver. Yeah. Right now. This it's, fog you it'll speak stump of. you every now and then, you know. This fog, it's very interesting <laughs> indeed. So thought provoking. Well, a lot of people are seeing blue skies right now, bro. Yeah, it's true. It, it's a bluebird morning from Pueblo up through the Springs, Monument Hill, even parts of Castle Rock. Once you get west of the foothills, there's a little island, though, of fog over, over Denver and also some clouds to the north. So we're going to see some sunshine breaking out and then an afternoon chance for a mix of rain and so even a thunderstorm can't be ruled out. Here's a live view downtown. I mean, it looks looks dreary, right? You'd have no idea that the rest of the world and by the rest of the world, I mean, like if you go five miles west to Red Rocks or you go 10 miles south toward, say, Highlands Ranch and heading up toward Castle Rock, that it changes. It changes a lot. 31 degrees, the current temperature outside. Here's a look at Georgetown, a lot of snow out there. We had a couple inches last night. We've been dealing with this locally dense fog all morning. The DTC earlier had zero visibility. 32 at Fort Morgan right now. Snow showers in the northern front range will work southward throughout the afternoon, becoming rain showers, even a possibility of a thunderstorm. I'll show you that coming up up in detail, but first off today warmer than yesterday. 54 the high yesterday it was only 37, but we're still running almost 10 degrees colder than normal guys coming up 70s on the way this weekend. All right, Brooks, thanks. Wheat Ridge police now asking for help finding this stolen dog. Buddy is a male pit bull Rottweiler mix. He was in a red Toyota Tacoma pickup that was stolen this morning off of I-70 in Kipling. If you have any information about that missing truck or dog, Please call Wheat Ridge Police. Happening today, the Boulder District Attorney's Office is going to hold a news conference in two hours from right now on that grocery store tragedy. District Attorney Michael Dory will lay out the next step in the case against the accused shooter. Prosecutors have submitted a motion to add dozens of brand new charges against the accused shooter. There were 11 original charges filed against him. Now 43 more counts have been added. Our legal analyst Chris Decker says it takes a while to analyze the crime scene and get a full list of what those charges should be. You can't just ignore all of the other laws that may have been violated. And it's, it's also entirely possible that additional charges still may be brought. The accused shooter will be back in court on May 25th for a status hearing. Confused patients showing up to an abandoned vaccine clinic in Westminster yesterday and the problem solvers quickly learning it's connected to another clinic out of Adams County that shut down last week for refrigeration issues. Both clinics are operated by Advanced Urgent Care. The state says that it closed several of the company's sites out of an abundance of caution after discovering that they were not keeping vaccine doses at the right temperature at the Adams County site. Now, what they don't know is why Advanced Urgent Care still had appointments on the book and scheduled at the Westminster Clinic location yesterday. And some patients even showed up and said they didn't even know about that cancellation. It's a waste of an hour and a half yeah. of our time. We just got the email from them at 3.51. That's after we talked to them on the phone. And uh, we drove all the way down here for a 4 o'clock appointment. Advanced Urgent Care says it has not administered any doses at that closed site since April 14th when they were initially shut down. And they don't know when they're going to get up and running again. And they say they're trying to get a hold of those folks who do still have appointments that will be pushed back. Meantime, the city of Denver says not enough Latinos are getting their COVID shots. Local leaders estimate only 12% of that group in Denver has gotten their vaccine, but they make up roughly half of the city's COVID cases. We do recognize there is a gap. We do recognize the numbers are low. So we're doubling down on our efforts and strategies to make sure our community is safe. We're told vaccine equity sites like these have been set up in five neighborhoods. The issue has been getting neighbors to take advantage of them. And a reminder here, getting a vaccine is now easier than ever in the state. As of yesterday, there are three locations that anyone can drive up to and get that shot without an appointment. That's uh, the case at the ranch in Larimer County, Ball Arena, 
here in Denver and at the Colorado State Fairgrounds down in Pueblo. The state hopes more people will show up to be vaccinated if it is more convenient for their schedule. President Biden says that the country is on track to administer its 200 millionth vaccine shot by today. And now the president wants to make it even easier for Americans to get vaccinated, calling on all employers to provide paid time off for workers to get their shots. It's not clear if the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be an option as regulators investigate a possible link to blood clots. Tomorrow, a CDC committee will actually meet to decide the future of the distribution of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Back here in Colorado, Red Rocks Amphitheater hosting its first big show in a long time tonight. It's the first time the iconic music venue will welcome back a large crowd in over a year. Obviously, uh, they had to cancel all of their shows last summer due to COVID. Fox 31's Emily Allen joining us live from Red Rocks. Okay, a lot of people excited. They're finally opening back up again. They are, and you know it's quiet here this morning, but you know it's going to be a much different scene later on today, and that's because this iconic venue finally welcoming people back, and so we're going to see the first concert in a long time here, and you can imagine a lot of people are excited about it. Well, you're waking up to the sounds of Lotus. They are playing their first of four shows tonight at Red Rocks. The electronic jam band is a familiar favorite here at Red Rocks. They were supposed to play three shows, ended up adding a fourth show, which is happening tonight, and that's marking the first big concert at Red Rocks since the pandemic hit. There will be changes because of COVID. The crowd is limited to 2,500 people, even though the venue can hold up to 9,500 people. Seats will be divided into four sections. Each section will have its own parking lot and end Entrance. The crowd is encouraged to wear masks outside and masks will be required at any indoor spaces at Red Rocks. That includes restrooms, the trading post and visitor center. And Red, Red Rock says that capacity limits and regulations may change over the course of this concert season. It's asking that fans just stay up to date with um, the rules and capacity limits of the concert that they will be attending. But you can imagine fans as well as this venue excited to see music back here because this is a big year for Red Rocks. It's its 80th anniversary. Emily Allen, Fox 31. Right, I'm going I'm to, Megan, you're going to do this too. We're going to look at the schedule. Yes. And you can do this too, Emily. Are you joining us at the 9 o'clock hour? Are we going to talk to you? Hopefully. But uh, you, uh, you uh, Yeah, uh, uh, I maybe. am. Okay, okay. so we're going to look of. at the schedule and we're each going to pick out which show, if we can only pick one this right. season to go to, we would Well, you know what? I bet a lot of people would be excited just to go out to the venue and hear live music. True. It doesn't matter who's playing. Or, or the movies at the Red Rocks right. or what have you. It's but like, I'll still, take anything. Regardless, you okay. got you got to look at the list All right. and pick a show. and then we'll, Are you going to we'll buy us tickets, Kirk? No, I'm not buying any tickets. What? Well, then I'm not playing the game. I got kids. I can't buy tickets. <laughs> well, they can come too. We can pick it a big family <laughs> hey, outing. You're taking the kids out. Yes, I'll buy tickets. Okay. <laughs> Date night for mom and dad. 808 right now. Time to the traffic update starting today. RTD customers who are used to using the park and ride of the Broadway marketplace will need to park elsewhere or face a ticket and be towed. RTD decided not to renew its license for those parking spots. Now, there is still parking nearby at the I-25 Broadway station, but just a heads up so you don't, get a, you don't get a ticket, you don't get towed, nobody wants that. NASA turning our focus back to planet Earth today. Well, it is Earth Day, of course, and we're talking with the administration about all the tools that they use to keep an eye on our weather and the climate. And our weather forecast today featuring partial sunshine breaking out, and we're going to see a high of 54 degrees. A lot warmer than it was yesterday, but still 9 degrees cooler than our typical high of 63. Coming up, we'll talk about a chance for a thunder shower this afternoon, followed by a much warmer weekend into the 70s.
from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. Another success by NASA's Perseverance rover bodes well for future exploration of Mars. A small golden box attached to the robot was able to convert carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere into oxygen. I love that it's a golden box, too. How awesome is that? Mm -hmm. It's the first time that's ever been done on another planet. Not only could the process produce oxygen for future astronauts to breathe, it could also allow human explorers to live off the land rather than depend on costly resupply wow. from Earth. Pretty fascinating. And we've heard a lot about Mars, obviously, but uh, NASA actually has a variety of missions that focus on studying changes here on our planet, the bl big blue marble. That's right. From sea level ri rises to hurricanes, all the stuff that impacts us here on Earth. Natural disasters. And here to celebrate Earth Day, we have the NASA chief technologist, Douglas Terrier. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you on Earth Day as we celebrate our beautiful home planet. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, when I think of NASA, I think of space. I think of other planets. I think of the moon. I think of Mars. But you guys actually do spend a lot of time focusing on our planet as well. That's right. We, we have a lot of assets that are focused on exploring the solar system. You mentioned the Mars rover. We've explored all the planets in the solar system. Of course, we've had human missions to the moon. We've been in orbit now for over two decades with humans on the International Space Station. But a large portion of our effort is focused on exploring our own home planet from the unique vantage point of space. And we've got dozens of missions that really look at everything from the seas to the land conditions, ice caps, the atmosphere, and really try to understand and measure the complexity of our environment here on Earth. And when we talk about natural disasters, everything from hurricanes to flooding and droughts, uh, here in Colorado, in the news lately, we're talking about wildfires. I mean, so devastating uh, here in our region. Last summer, people lost their lives, their homes. What are you all doing uh, there at NASA uh, to help mitigate some of that? Yeah, so we're, of course, we're seeing as the climate changes, we're seeing quite extreme uh, weather phenomena. And as you said, everything from wildfires to droughts, as well as stronger hurricanes, um, more intense storms across the country. So we have, we specifically with the instruments that are uniquely positioned around the orbit of Earth, we can measure the entire, uh, the entire surface of Earth, looking at all the different parts of the ecosystem that work together, including, as I said, the constituents of the atmosphere, the temperatures of the ocean, the constituents in the oceans. We look at the, the melting ice caps, and we try to develop models based on that very extensive set of data that help us to better predict how the climate will respond to changes as with human interaction and with changes in our environment. And more importantly, to develop methods, provide, we provide all that data to the public, to academia, to uh, other agencies, to develop um, approaches that will help us mitigate those changes and min minimize the impact on, on our life here on Earth. Well, yeah, when you think about uh, you know, the satellites and such that are up there that monitor weather and monitor the Earth, I mean, you guys usually, in most cases, put them there. And so obviously you're heavily involved with that. You have a, a, a new mission, Landsat, a new uh, satellite that's gonna be up there launched later this year. Wh what, what is that? What will that new tool do? Yeah, so that's great. Great question. Landsat is actually a series of spacecraft that have been ma making measurements of the Earth and its environment for several decades now, a series of missions. We have a new mission coming up later this year, Landsat 7, as you mentioned, which provides a, a very important increase in the sensitivity and the accuracy of the measurements that we can make with new instruments that will measure um, you know, the, the atmosphere, measure our changing sea temperatures, so see the, the rises in the sea, the melting of the ice caps, um, and, and be able to, again, give us more precise data than we've ever had before to inform our models, make better predictions, and better understand how to mitigate those climate changes. Wow. Well, uh, Douglas, it was a pleasure talking with you from NASA. Of course, only a certain amount of people can do your job. I mean, high-level expertise there, and we appreciate all your efforts uh, to preserve our beautiful in, planet. In other words, thank you for being one of the smart people at NASA. We That's appreciate exactly, that. Well, exactly what I meant <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> NASA.gov, by the way, obviously NASA's website, so much information. He talks about sharing all of that. 
uh, data with uh, the public. They really do. You go on NASA.gov. Really it's fascinating. Endless. Brooks, I know you've spent hours on NASA.gov like I have. I, I really have. Those guys are amazing. Guys and, and gals, all the folks there at NASA doing an amazing job. That's what we're using to look down at, at the satellite imagery. This is from GO-16, a mission that was, uh, that was in partnership with NASA to get that satellite up there. This is from 22,000 miles away, looking down at Denver with a telescope. And you can see in the dark areas here, this is clear skies. That's, that's what this depiction is. It's a black and white image. And, and the white are the clouds, and this is fog. So we've had this dense fog over Denver, but to the west of town, it's clear. To the south, it's clear for the most part. And northeast, it's bluebird skies from Pueblo up to the springs and the Palmer Divide. And then you start getting into the clouds and snow showers from Fort Collins into the high country. So it's a very interesting morning in that from the perspective of downtown Denver, if this was your world, you'd think, man, what a dreary, dreary day. But truth be told, if you drive a half an hour in any direction, the sun comes out, and it's a lot prettier outside. Here's a view from I-70 near Ville Pass. Notice the shadows. It is sunny there as well, at least partially sunny. The fog, though, has been an issue down toward the DTC on the south side of downtown. Zero visibility for a time this morning. 30 in Bennett, 24 at Estes Park, 32 degrees at Monument Hill. So here's the scoop today. The sun breaking out, but then it'll be followed by afternoon rain showers, mixing with snow if it comes down hard enough, and even a clap of thunder can't be ruled out. Let's pinpoint weather app during the springtime months will be a fantastic tool for us because it covers everything from the snow to the storms, and we're going to see everything <laughs> between those two things, everything in between from now through the weekend and beyond. It's even going to warm up into the 70s. I mean, this weekend we're talking about warm weather emerging from this polar slumber with snow continuing across parts of Colorado, especially in the high country. You know, the high country today could easily see two to four inches of fresh snow above 10,000 feet. And we've been dealing with a couple of snow showers in the northern front range, enough to put a little bit more snow on the roads there, the side roads, less traveled, bridges and overpasses, but for the most part, starting now it's a little bit after eight o'clock that solar shovel if you will that april sun angle beaming down on the roads sort of like a microwave heating it up so any slick spots will just become plain old wet and we're actually going to see those roads drying out as we head toward lunchtime before that precip moves in and then gets them wet once again and it could thunder and it may mix with snow but it looks like the heaviest snow will be along i-70 west of georgetown up to about the tunnel before even that moves away we could be talking about a widespread one to two inches today in the high country maybe three to four at those highest elevations, those hardest hit areas I mentioned. And then as you head south toward the San Juans, around Wolf Creek Pass and west toward the Silverton area, tell you right, about three or four inches of snow. For Denver, maybe a coating if it comes down hard enough this evening, but it's really not going to do much. This is a spring snow, and with highs in the 50s, whatever falls is going to melt immediately. 57 tomorrow, a couple of thunder showers, 67 Saturday, and then look at this, Sunday and Monday, mid and upper 70s, absolutely spectacular spring weather. But don't let your guard down. We got more snow on the way for the middle of next week. A little mix on the way. And guys, long range forecast suggesting that the first week of May could feature a significant snowstorm across parts of the front range. Stay tuned on that potential. Over it. I yeah, know. Me too. <laughs> Am I the only one thinking that right now? I, I love the moisture. I would love some big thunderstorms, some rain. I just, I, I'm kind of done with the snow. Thank you, Brooks. 820. I'm sorry if you love snow. I know. Uh, well, you can't make everybody happy. You I know, have so. never tried. Big changes <laughs> for drone pilots, and they start today. A big wish granted. New details on the special work they need to do to allow the extra permissions. I look outside.
Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. 824, welcome back. It is Thursday morning. New details coming out about a deadly police shooting that happened in North Carolina. A deputy has been placed on leave after he shot and killed 40-year-old Andrew Brown Jr. while serving a search warrant in the town of Elizabeth City. Witnesses say Brown got into his car and tried to drive away when he was shot. There are reports multiple shots were fired. Now, authorities say the deputy was wearing a body camera. No word on what the warrant was for. 100 demonstrators gathered at the scene to protest that shooting. Funeral services will be held today for Dante Wright. He's the 20 year old black man who was shot and killed by a police officer during a traffic stop in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, which is right outside of Minneapolis. The former officer who shot him said she mistakenly used her gun instead of her taser. Kim Potter is her name. She resigned days after the shooting and now is facing second degree manslaughter charges. The Minnesota Department of Corrections releasing this new booking photo of former officer Derek Chauvin after the Minneapolis uh, former police officer was found guilty in the murder of George Floyd. He's scheduled to be sentenced in eight weeks. The Minneapolis Police Department now facing a civil investigation in the wake of that verdict. The Department of Justice already investigating whether the officers involved in Floyd's death violated his civil rights. Now it will look at the entire department to see if there's a pattern of unconstitutional or unlawful policing. And today, new FAA rules for drones are now in effect. Small drones are now able to fly over people. They can also fly at night, but they must have anti-collision lights. Drone carriers no longer need to connect their aircraft to the Internet to transmit location data, but they do need to broadcast them to uh, using that radio frequency. The last rule requires drone operators to carry their remote pilot certificate and ID at all times. New this morning, the San Miguel County Sheriff's Office updating us on a terrifying rescue. The skier who tumbled, get this, 2,000 vertical feet near the top of Wilson Peak has been released from the hospital. The 37-year-old says his helmet likely saved his life. Sheriff's Office says the man also expressed gratitude to all the rescuers who helped him. Now, you'll remember it was a pretty sophisticated rescue involving a helicopter and just the fact that this guy tumbled 2,000 vertical feet and managed to survive this is unreal. So thank God he's walking out of the hospital. Uh, lucky to be alive. The search is on for Solo, and now we've got new surveillance photos to show you uh, that may help find this 15-year-old stolen dog. Our weather forecast today, the sun breaking out. So many of us have been enjoying a sunny morning, whether it's in Castle Rock or in Lakewood, but Denver downtown socked into the fog for now. That's going to change. Sunshine leading to some afternoon showers of rain, maybe mixing with snow. Even a clap of thunder. Stay with me. I'll show you the latest on a warmer weekend with highs pushing 80 degrees in some communities.
Denver. This is Fox 31 News at 8.30. We're on it. This morning, dozens of more charges now filed in the Boulder grocery store shooting case. We'll tell you what they are and what they mean straight ahead. And in 2020, more people died from overdosing here in Denver than from car crashes and homicides combined. So how people can protect their loved ones from a hidden drug. All right, 8.30 here on your Thursday. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan O'Halloran. Good morning to you, too. I'm Kirk are Yonke. You, are you mocking me? I sure am. Okay. All right, <laughs> no, you I just like keep it. it up there, Yonke. I like that pep. You I'm just trying to channel up. your energy, Megan, and we're going to try to channel yeah, that towards the forecast. sprinkle it all around. Let's sprinkle it on the forecast. Let's elevate the show. Let's see if we can get a little yeah, bit of sunshine. <laughs> let's, let's align our chakras together, guys. Okay. Chakras. Um, <laughs> it's our energy centers. Come on. <laughs> It's it, you know what? It's one of those days today that the weather is going to be all over the place. We started off with dense fog. We've broken out into the sunshine. It's been a sunny morning in Castle Rock and also in Lakewood, for instance. But farther to the north, it's actually snowing right now. and It's been snowing in parts of the northern front range. 31 degrees right now. We're about to crack freezing. That's strong April sunshine melting away any icy spots in the roads, even up toward Georgetown. Visibility is improving. The temperatures rising 32 in Boulder, 27 degrees at Castle Rock, 32 in Fort Morgan. A little band of snow this this morning dropped a coating to an inch or two up along the foothills west of Fort Collins. We're going to see this energy working into Denver this afternoon. That will be the driver for our precipitation chances. And I say precipitation and not specifically rain or snow because it could be rain and snow despite these warmer temperatures in the mid 50s today, even a chance for a thunderstorm. Our high temperature is much warmer today than yesterday. Yesterday we only saw 37, but we're still about 10 degrees colder than normal. Coming up though, when we see 70s entering the forecast, followed by another chance for snow. Isn't that crazy, guys? Going from 70s back to a snow chance. It sure is. Yeah. April in Colorado. Thank you, Brooks. <laughs> Happening today, the district attorney's office is going to give an update in about 90 minutes from right now about the King Supers grocery store tragedy in Boulder. A slew of new charges being filed against the man accused of shooting and killing 10 people last month. Fox 31's Jim Holy joining us live up in Boulder with the latest. Jim. Megan, good morning. Uh, altogether, an additional 43 charges now being filed against the, the alleged shooter. The district attorney prosecutor is now having more time to put the case together, and that's why we have the charges coming now. Out here in front of the store, you still see this huge memorial wall here for the victims who died here exactly one month ago today. Here's the latest on the investigation now in Boulder this morning. Initially, the alleged shooter was slapped with 10 counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted first-degree murder. That was for a shooting at one of the responding officers on that afternoon. And now comes the additional 43 charges. The district attorney is now be beginning to get ballistics information. They're beginning to get information from the crime scene in terms of the number of rounds that were fired, who fired, which rounds. And so beyond the original 11 charges, the alleged shooter now faces 32 additional attempted first degree murder charges, 10 large capacity magazine charges and one count of first degree assault. The defendant, the alleged shooter in this case, due back in court on May 25th. That will be for what they call a status hearing. But uh, once again, now the district attorney, Michael Doherty, here in Boulder, holding a briefing coming up later on today. That will be at 10 o'clock. And at that time, he'll tell us more about the additional charges and exactly what they mean. Live in Boulder at the Kings this morning, I'm Jim Hooley, Fox 31. Yeah, appreciate that. And obviously a lot of um, items still out there mm -hmm. posted on the fence, but a lot of them have already been collected by the uh, Boulder Museum in an effort to preserve those memories. New developments. A young woman has been begging for any information that could bring her dog home safely. Solo, 15-year-old Beagle Basset Hound Mix. Investigators have released photos of suspects in this case. Westminster police say the pictures of the suspects were taken from a business in the area where the vehicle was stolen. The vehicle was taken with the dog inside. If you're able to identify either the male suspects, contact Westminster Police. Solo was in a car that was stolen near 74th and Federal, April 16th. Her owner, Caroline, says that her friends took Solo for a drive. They say they left her in the car for less than a minute. They went to a tropical smoothie cafe. When they looked outside, the car was gone. Solo was gone, too. Caroline spent her weekend handing out flyers with Solo's face and information, hoping the power of social media and word of mouth will help them bring Solo home. The state of Colorado setting a grim record for overdose deaths in one single year. Not a record we want to set. We're talking particularly about fentanyl. Yeah. 
Fox 31's Drew Engelbart joining us live from the newsroom with more on uh, what you can do to protect your loved ones. Good morning, yeah, and Drew. Good morning, Kirk and Megan. This is important information here. In 2020, more people died from overdosing here in Denver than from car crashes and homicides combined. Fentanyl responsible for more than a third of those overdose deaths. So here's a look at some of the grim statistics. More than 1,200 people died from overdoses statewide. And you see here in Denver, more than 300. That's nearly double the amount of deaths from car crashes and homicides combined. One of the leading causes of the overdoses here is the arrival of fentanyl. It's a dangerous drug being disguised as basic prescription pills. And at the Denver Medical Examiner's Office, Dr. James Caruso is finding manufactured fentanyl in more bodies than ever before. Buying these drugs on the street, they have no idea what they're getting. Yeah, and that's the problem. They have no idea. Later today, we're continuing this conversation on our digital platform, Fox 31 Now, how people can protect their loved ones. You can watch that at 2 o'clock this afternoon on the Fox 31 app. It's going to have important information like at Denver's Harm Reduction Action Center. Right now, they're handing out fentanyl test strips, which can alert drug users if their product has been laced with fentanyl. And right now, there's actually a standing Narcan prescription. That's for overdose reversal drug. That's what Narcan is. For the city and county of Denver means that anyone can pick up Narcan at any pharmacy at any time. Certainly something you hope you never need, but information that's important to have in case you do need it, guys. All right, Drew, thank you for that. 836, want to get to some breaking news coming to us right now out of Colorado Springs. Police, as we speak, investigating an officer-involved shooting in Colorado Springs. This is on West Garden of the Gods Road. So this is on, you probably know that exit. This is right off of I-25. They are asking everyone to avoid the area. They have officers on the way. Uh, they're going to provide updates. We will bring you that information. Again, an officer-involved shooting down in Colorado Springs on Garden of the Gods Road, right off of I-25, just to the west of I-25. It is Earth Day today. Happy Look Earth Day. Gina. And if you are looking to add to your own garden a little bit, well, you still have plenty of time to do that. It is, of course, spring, believe it or not, mm -hmm. in Colorado. But as you can see, the snow on the ground there, it's all about strategy and planning and dodging the weather. Look, it's so its so cold. Dan Drew is frozen. Frozen in time. Oh, oh he's, he's back. Unfrozen. Oh, all right. Yay! All hooray. right. We got the blood pumping. We got, we got Dan back in action. Dan joining us live from Arvada at She Grows Flower Farm. He's frozen again. Oh. Come on, Dan, stop teasing us like that. There you are. Oh. Happy Earth Day to <laughs> you. Happy <laughs> Earth Day to you. Hey, it's springtime. You can't wait to get in your garden. I know I can't because my wife tells me that. Uh, but wait a minute. What's all this white stuff? This is snow. I can't believe it. Well, I can't believe it. We're in Colorado. But wait a minute. So, all right, no gardening. We're done. Back to you. Not true. <laughs> There is all kinds of stuff you still can do right now. This is a great opportunity to do some planning, says Gina Schley, who owns She Grows. Gina, hello. Hello. How are you over Hi. there? Hey, welcome to She Grows. Now, what is She Grows? This is a flower farm? This is a flower farm. We have three acres here in Arvada, uh -huh. and we grow all specialty cut flowers for florists and community members and all the good stuff. Well, listen, you were talking to me and I'm talking to you and I said, Gina, what can we do? And you said, Dan, there's a lot, this is a great time yes. to plan. And you explain, like, this yeah. is a great time well, for people gardening to gardening does not just start in May, like in the spring. I mean, I've been planting seeds since January. So, and right now it's prime time to start planting seeds inside. Planting seeds inside? Yes, like all, right, all well, sorts of them. Let's go inside okay, right now so and go. then you can show us exactly what you're all doing. Right. Thank you. All right, she we grows. See, these are all off. plants waiting to go outside. Oh, wow. Did you grow all this stuff? Those I oh, actually plants. ordered from someone. Okay. And they, those are called plugs. Okay. Lysanthus, eucalyptus, Ooh, snapdragons. All right, what are, now what are we looking at here, Okay, Gina? so this is my little studio. This uh -huh. is where I have lots of, look at all these plants that I've started Beautiful. inside. So you did that. We don't have a greenhouse. We just start everything under lights. Uh -huh. These are just, you know, Home Depot lights that I um, basically just hooked up to the top of this rack. I Look have one on that. each Look shelf. Up. So I can, I can start like 3,000 plants just on this shelf alone. So what you're saying so, is people can do this at home? Yes, you can definitely do this at home. You could put this in your garage. You could put it in your office. I've had it in my basement. Really, you just need a little heater. So I have a heater right here, a little radiator heater. Uh -huh. Keeps the space inside warm. Uh -huh. And then we have, this is eucalyptus right here. You can see the lights are really close to the plants. Oh, yeah. But that really helps them grow. So You're they, tricking the plants into thinking that's the sun. Yes. Right? Yes. 
Yes. Yep. So they guess. grow completely fine inside. All so right. Now she grows. You, you, you. What do you sell here? So we sell flowers. Okay. Okay. So you see a few little tomato plants, but that's just for my family. But yep. most of this, I mean, all of these are straw flower. That you know what straw flower is? I do not. Okay. Straw flower. It's a beautiful flower that you can dry and people use it in wreaths oh. and all sorts of different designs yes. bunny tail grass we bunny have uh lots of things up here all right so can people come to she grows for information too right people, people can come can, here people talk can, to you well this is not a public farm mm -hmm. so we sell mostly wholesale and then we have a csa okay. so community supported agriculture where people buy a share of our harvest up front okay so like early in the season they want they'll say we want your flowers so yep. then they come once a week and pick up flowers now gina schley people can also see you got a new show we're going to talk about that coming up in a little yes. bit you've got yes. a new show on television yes she's got a show, show on television yes she's going to be on tv one. it's but it's not this, not one. this one it's not yeah. this one yeah, 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 yeah. Not great information guys all right i'm going to toss it back to you there's still stuff to such do. a cool we're setup plan the garden it's, it's garden. interesting uh, one, one of my one of my neighbors has <laughs> a bunch of grow lights in their basement i said are you growing green beans or tomato and they wouldn't give me a straight answer oh they wouldn't no i don't know what they're growing Hmm. <laughs> oh. You could connect the dots there. I'm kidding, of course. Very cool. And it, it, is, it is something you can do. You can start those plants right now inside and then transfer them. And so, Dan, we'll check back in. One of the easiest ways you can contribute today to Earth Day is to recycle. It's something many of us are already doing. And if Super you're not, easy. you should be. Yeah. But trying to recycle the wrong things can cause major issues. New details on an app ready to teach you about the best recycling practices. from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. 844 on this Thursday on this Earth Day. Look at that. 
a day to look at the impact that we have on this beautiful planet and how to make it better. This is the Google Doodle today. So if wow. you go to Google.com, if you've been there already, uh, you're going to see this uh, animation. If you click on it, it'll take you to YouTube and show you this whole little video they got going on here. It shows a variety of trees being planted in natural habitats. One of the many ways we can do our part to keep our Earth healthy for future generations, you know, because I would love for my kids to have a place to live. And your kids' kids, yeah. And my kids, well, I don't know them yet, but I'll know them someday. <laughs> I don't know if you ever will. My kids, kids? Kid, okay, the, I sure okay. hope so. Okay, I'm sorry. The Gosh, kids, Megan, kids, kids, kids. kill me off so quickly. No, no, no. Another way to help is by <laughs> recycling. Uh, Tanya Raglan from Public Services is live with us. Good morning, Tanya. To help us understand how to get our kids excited about recycling, how to help them. Because uh, all my kids know is that they take boxes and milk jugs um, and pop bottles and cans, and they just put them in a special bin. That's what they know, which is, uh, that's good. That's step one, right? But that's the extent right. of it. So expand our knowledge here. Absolutely. Well, happy Earth Day, Kurt and Megan. Um, as you may be familiar with, Republic Services is a leader in environmental recycling services. And over the past year with the pandemic, we've seen an increase in at-home recycling. And with so many students and parents educating at home, we wanted to support at-home education. So we partnered with Mizzen by Mott, an education-focused nonprofit. Well, and you guys actually provide almost kind of like curriculum for kids to learn more about recycling. And it's, and it's, it's kind of about mm -hmm. the science of it too, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Mizzen by Mont is a free education app and it will feature Republic Services sustainability and recycling activities for kids from pre-K to 12th grade. So all of these amazing and free educational resources like videos of our recycling centers, lessons, at-home practice activities are all on our website already, recyclingsimplified.com. Cool. So this goes beyond just recycling, because we all know we're supposed to recycling, but it answers the why. And you've Absolutely. also got the recycling do's and don'ts. Are there any um, misconceptions about recycling or anything surprising that we may not know off the top of our head? Well, that's a great question. And that's why recycling education is so important. That's why this new tool will help both kids and parents become better recyclers. A big misconception are plastic bags. When you go to the grocery store, yeah. you get a plastic bag, you think it's recyclable. It's actually not allowed in your curbside program. You might be able to take it back to the grocery store, but it actually clogs our machines at the recycling oh, center. So, yeah. My kids do that. Really? They're like, well, Dad, it's plastic. I'm like, nope. Not. Can't do it. So I throw it's them all in my the car. I have like a hundred of them in the back of my car. And yeah. I, when I finally Don't you remember. Put like the bag in the bag in the bag in yeah, the bag. Yeah, exactly. And like a hundred of them. Bag them up inside the bag. Yeah. And then pizza boxes. I've heard I've heard different opinions on pizza boxes because they have all that grease and sometimes mm -hmm. cheese and stuff. Can I recycle those those used pizza boxes? You can, but half of it. So a good rule is when in doubt, throw it out. If it's got food, if it's got soil, if it's all layered with you know, water and grease, like you said, it's actually not recyclable anymore because it, it ruins the integrity of the product. So when you have a pizza box, cut it in half. The part that's dry and clean, put in your recycling container. And the part that's really greasy and dirty, into the trash. Throw that one out. Okay. It, that's why they put those little table things on the pizza. To try to, to keep, keep it. it <laughs> yeah. To keep it from getting we on the always, box. They were like doll tables when I was a kid. Like, oh, we got <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so we got to go. We're out of time, but I really quickly want to ask you, if people don't have curbside recycling, is there any way for them to recycle without having curbside? It's a great question. I highly encourage you to go to RecyclingSimplified.com. Um, you can visit a lot of different resources about near recycling centers near you, what's allowed in a program. So check it out when you have a time. Awesome. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, Have great you recycling tips for kids and adults. I know, I have just as many Parents. questions as my kids have, so that was <laughs> very, very informational. Tanya, appreciate it. Happy Earth Day to you. Happy 848 Day. right now. All right. Well, did you learn anything, Maggie? I did. Good. I mean, mind blown. <laughs> Good. Let's get, get over to Brooks. Brooks. Hey, Brooks. Hey, good morning, guys. We've got a day featuring the fog and the clouds starting to clear out, but it's going to come back this afternoon. Right now, a wintry view from the backs of Shaker Skycam Network, snow covered, except for the baseball diamond, the strong April sun angle, keeping those roads navigable and eventually drying them out before the morning is out. But man, talk about snow. We had another couple of inches last night. Normally, we see 56 and a half inches for the season, but we've had 80.2. Huge amount compared to normal. In fact, this rivals the 1983 
84 snow season when we had 80.9 inches and I'm confident we're going to get there because we've got another shot at a little bit of snow this afternoon, but especially next week. And there are indications that we may see a significant snowstorm during the first week of May. So this is proven to be a fairly historic snow winter. It's good news for climbing out of this drought, this drought that has been so persistent, not just for Denver, but across the entire West, a drought that unfortunately has gotten no better for places like California. There the it's just dry as a tinderbox. So at least here we can we can have comfort in that the, the rain we've had in the snow has helped a lot. Satellite image want to show you this. The darker areas are clear skies, so we've got a couple little batches of fog left over Western Adams and Arapahoe counties and also some clouds up toward Fort Collins, Boulder and then back into the mountains. But bluebird skies once you get from basically the Palmer Divide all the way down to Pueblo. That's going to change though this little band of precipitation that brought some snow to Wellington and Fort Collins and also back through Grand County this morning. We'll be heading southeast, turning over to some rain, then maybe mixing with snow and even there's potential for a thunder shower to develop before this day is out. But right now the heaviest snow is south of Granby, just north of Idaho Springs, really as you get into Winter Park and Fraser, a little band of snow there and also some more snow back through the Vale area. So our forecast though featuring a pretty significant warm up once we get through this and by this I mean this afternoon a possibility of rain mixing with snow some Thunder claps through five, six o'clock commute time. We could have another wet evening commute. And once you get to the higher elevations, once you get out towards, say, Clear Creek County and beyond, I mean, we're talking snow and we could see several inches or more throughout the day today. All right, as far as the forecast goes for snow, just a coating possible in the foothills of Jefferson County, but two to three inches additional snowfall along the divide. So if you're heading that way, it's going to look like wintertime. Let's talk about the weather where you live. We're going to see a high of 54 in Denver today, an afternoon mix of rain and snow, even a clap of thunder. Meanwhile, warm in the southeastern plains today, 73 degrees in La Junta and Los Animas. We're all going to share in that warmth by the time we hit the weekend, because after a couple of days in the 50s, we warm into the 60s Saturday, mid 70s for Sunday and Monday, an absolute Absolutely spectacular weekend that defines the concept of spring splendor Saturday, Sunday and Monday before we're back to a chance for some rain and snow. It's going to be welcome precip though guys if we can keep on getting these systems. It's really, really going to help things as we lead into what should be a pretty dry and hot summertime. Yeah, my, my grass is already starting to clean up, which is always a good sign Beautiful. that we're getting a lot of that good moisture. An exclusive look at how Colorado fire departments are prepping for the upcoming wildfire season.
Though Colorado keeps having bouts with spring yeah. snow, the dry season not too far away. Well, yeah, I mean, we're getting moisture now, but we all know how summer goes here in Colorado. Firefighters training for a hot summer ahead. In fact, a quarter of the Denver Fire Department's crew is trained in wildfire response. You may not think of them when you think of wildfire response, but they are involved. Yesterday, they were given an annual refresher course. This year, the department is training 58 new people to be deployed if necessary. They've also purchased about $15,000 of new gear for firefighters called in to assist. But the department says the metro area will always be its number one priority. You can see how often metro firefighters are expected to be deployed to wildfires this year. It's a digital exclusive story and it's online right now at KDVR.com and the Fox 31 News app. Two high school volleyball players in northern Colorado continue to recover after a terrible accident. Emily and Zoe Rollins were driving home from volleyball practice at Thompson Valley High School in Loveland Monday night when their vehicle slid off of Highway 34 during that snowstorm. They both suffered very bad injuries and are in local hospitals. 16 year old Emily is at Medical Center of the Rockies. 15 year old Zoe is at Children's Hospital in Aurora. They've been FaceTiming each other, checking in with each other. Um, yeah, they're very close. It's hard being in two different hospitals for, for them and for us as parents. Well, friends have set up a GoFundMe page to help with the medical costs. You can find a link to that if you'd like to help out on our website, kdvr.com and our Fox 31 News app. 856 right now. Today, by the way, is Earth Day, a local company taking something many of us throw away and turning it into something very beautiful. This is really cool. All new in our 9 o'clock hour, we're getting a look at how this environmentally friendly jewelry is made. And sommeliers help you pick out the perfect wine, right? Now there's one who can help you choose the perfect olive oil.